Hey guys, this is Andrew with RockClass101.com. Today we're bringing you episode two for our concept lesson series, and it's going to be all about harmonizing C major. So what does that mean exactly? Well, in this lesson, we're going to be looking at one of the most commonly used chord progressions. I mean, it's been used in tons and tons of hit tunes, and that's a 1-5-6-4. And we're going to be in the key of C major, so that means that we're playing the one chord, which is C, to the five chord, which is G, to the six chord, which is A minor, and the four chord, which is F. Now, most of the time when we are playing a song um, in a jam situation, people are singing over it, it's kind of like the left hand of the screen when we watched the performance just a second ago, right? Everyone's always playing the basic. Right, so they're playing all those basic chords. But the problem that happens is that when you have like five people all playing the same tune and everyone is doing that, then there's no musical depth, right? I mean, the only interesting thing that's happening outside of the uke is the vocal melody and the singing on top of it, right? So this lesson is going to be all about teaching you how to break out of this typical thing that you usually play. And it's going to teach you how to play these chords up higher on the neck. And that's what we call playing higher voice chords. And we're also going to be intertwining some simple melodies into those chords. And we're going to be learning a solo. And that solo is going to be playing changes. And by playing changes, here's what's the cool thing with that. Is that every time we change chord, right? So when we're playing a C chord, our solo is going to be playing notes that highlight C major. But when the song changes to G, our solo will be playing notes that highlight G. So that's what playing changes is. It creates a more melodic sounding lead, right? So we're just highlighting the notes of the chord at the time it's being used in our solo. So that's what this lesson's all about. It's going to teach you how to break out of that rut of playing just the same stuff and teach you how to create something a little bit more interesting and melodic. So let's get started talking about this lesson. So basically this tune is eight bars in length and we're playing it three times through. So this lesson, which is part one, is gonna cover that first eight bars. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to play that basic rhythm with those uh, percussive hits. And then we're also gonna be looking at the first part of playing higher. So we're gonna be learning the harmony that I play higher. And if you guys want to learn the rest of the tune, which will be in part two of the video lesson. You can just go to rockclass101.com, look for EP002, and there you'll be able to find part two of the video lesson, plus get the tabs to follow along with. You can print it out as a PDF format, and you can get access to that on-screen tab viewer, which literally lets you hit play and watch the tab scroll across in real time. Just a great asset. Plus there's a backing track. Right? So once you learn all the higher parts and those harmonies, you can play along to the backing track that's provided at rockclass101.com. All right, so let's kick into it. So the first part we're going to talk about is that rhythm. And we're just learning those basic chords, right? So we have a basic C chord to the basic G to the basic A minor to the basic F, right? So nothing uh, f fancy or flashy happening yet. So each chord is two bars in length. Here's what it sounds like. We'll just start with C. All right, let's talk real quick about the rhythm that's being used, and we'll just talk about one bar. If I tap it out, I have one, two, and three, and four, and, right? So I have quarter followed by two eighth notes. One, two, and. And that end of two is going to hold out, and then I'm going to hit on the end of three again. One, two, and three, and. And again, one, two, and three, and. And then we're gonna hit eighth notes on beat four and the end of four. One, two, and three, and four, and. Okay? Now, the cool thing is that this rhythm is actually gonna be the same as the harmony. When we learn the harmony in just a minute, it's gonna be the same rhythm that you're playing over it. So if you can nail it for the chords, you'll get it for the first part of the harmony. So. If I was to play and call it out, I would have strum, slap, pluck for the first part, right? Strum, slap, pluck, right? So let's try that. If I count out the beat, three, four, one, two, end, right? So now you're starting to hear that rhythm, right? Strum, slap, pluck, right? And when I'm pluck, I'm using these four fingers to pluck 
all four strings. Again, three, four, strum, slap, pluck. Okay, we're gonna hold that pluck out and then we're gonna hit string one and follow it with a slap again and then a pluck, right? So again, I'm hitting one, following it by a slap and a pluck. If I put that whole bar together, I have three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and, right? And if I call out the hits, I have strum, slap, pluck, one, slap, pluck, right? So think of it either way, or you can even think of it as a beat. Da, ba, 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 right? Right? Right, try and get that rhythm stuck in your head. Again, three, four. Okay, now that rhythm's just gonna repeat, so we're gonna have two bars of that. So I have strum, slap, pluck, one slap, pluck, strum, slap, pluck, one slap, pluck. Right, so that's the base of our rhythm for all of these chords. Again. Okay, the next chord, we're doing the same thing. Just go to G. Okay, so now if we put those two together, I have C. to A minor, same thing. Strum, slap, pluck, one slap, pluck. Strum, slap, pluck, one slap, pluck. To F, strum, slap, pluck, one slap, pluck, right? So each one goes twice. Now if we play all the way through, I've got three, four. after you play that three times through the form, the song's just gonna end on C. So there's the basic gist of the rhythm, right? So that is, again, played three times through, and what makes it interesting is the harmonies that we put over it. So let's go ahead and learn the first harmony. So this harmony happens over the first eight bars. Basically, we're gonna be using the caged method, which is a very popular method for guitar players, but it works so well for uke as well. And there's one key difference with caged. It's actually C-A-G-F-D for uke. Basically, we're taking what the name implies, C, A, G, F, and D. And we're learning how to move these shapes up higher to play chords higher up the neck. So let me show you, for example, the first chord for this tune was C, and our harmony is gonna be taking the G chord shape, right? Think caged. We're taking the G chord shape and we're moving it up the neck until it becomes a higher voicing of a C chord, right? So I would be going G, going up a whole step to A, up a whole step to B, up a half step to C, okay? So if this stuff doesn't make sense to you, I actually wrote an article, which you can go check out, that takes uh, or explains cage method in complete detail and has a lot of uh, examples that will help you really understand the concept and use it in your own playing. So be sure to check out that article if uh, you're kind of scratching your head right now saying, what is caged? So basically, um, the first chord that we're using for the harmony, for the first harmony, is a higher voicing of that G shape, right? And then I made one uh, difference. I lifted my index finger up for the third string, so I have an open third string. So to make the shape, again, just make a basic G and move that shape up to seven, eight, seven. And then you're gonna lift your index finger up. So I've got open four, open three, my ring finger on eight on string two, and my middle finger on seven on string one. Okay, so there's our first shape. Now, earlier we mentioned that our rhythm for the harmony matches the same rhythm for the basic strumming. So we already know this rhythm. We have one, two, and three, and four, and, right? One, two, and three, and four, and. So it's the same exact rhythm. And all we're doing is we're gonna be playing out of this chord shape, right? So I'm gonna be playing strum four, one, and then I'm gonna play two, four, one. 
Okay, so I have strum four one, two four one. That's bar one. Bar two, the only difference, instead of a strum on beat one, we're just gonna hit string one. One, four, one, two, four, one. So everything else is the same. So we have strum four one, two, four, one, one, four, one, two, four, one. And without me calling. That's what we get. One more time. Three, four. Okay, real slow. Okay, now our next shape is a pretty easy change. We're going to go down a half step with our ring finger. So our ring finger is going to go to seven on string two, and then take your index finger, put it on five on string one. The other two strings will still be open. And we have the same rhythm, and we actually have the same picking pattern. So we're going to go strum, four, one, two, four, one. There's bar one. Again, strum, four, one, two, four, one. Without me calling. Okay, and just like we saw before on bar two, we're cutting out the uh, strum and we're subbing it out for just playing string one by itself. So bar two is one, four, one, two, four, one. Right, so bar t uh, three and four together I have. Okay, and if I call it, I have strum, four, one, two, four, one, one, four, one, two, four, one. So now if I play the first um, C to G, so the first four bars, this is what we get. Next, we're going to A minor, right? So our chord that we're going to use is going to be an A minor 7. So to make this chord, we're going to take this shape that we left off on, this G shape, right? 7 and 5. We're going to drop it down a whole step, right? So just move that same shape down a whole step. So now you're on 5 on string 2 and 3 on string 1. And then add your middle finger to 4 on string 3. So now our only open string is string 4. So again, we're playing everything the same as last time. So strum for one, two, four, one, one, four, one, two, four, one. So everything is identical. We just have a different chord shape, right? Okay. And from here, here's the easy change. To go to an F chord, you're going to take that middle finger, move it up a half step. So you're going to fret five on string three. So now you've got five, five, three. So that's the only change that we made. Middle finger goes to five on string three. Now here's important, is our strum is gonna be from three down. So ignore string four. So we're gonna strum three down and we're gonna change our picking pattern. So this is the first bar for F. Strum, three, one, two, three, one. So again, I have strum, three, one, two, three, one. Okay, strum, three, one, two, three, one. Same exact rhythm. Strum, three, one, two, three, one. Without me calling? Okay. Now, the last bar for F, we're gonna be doing a walk up. So we're gonna be playing just st strings one and two, and we're gonna be hitting the five and three. So basically, we can lift that uh, middle finger up. We don't need it. We're going to pluck five and three on string one and two, right? And then move that shape up a whole step. So we're at seven and five. Okay. And then move it up a half step and we're going to be at eight and seven. So you can see we're back to that first chord shape of C. So it's literally walking its way back up, right? So we had A minor and then going back up backwards to the G and going backwards to the C. And then we're going up one more shape and we're going to be on 10 and we're gonna be on eight. So that's 10 on string two and eight on string one. And that'll be our last hit. So we're, we're literally just walking backwards, right? Ba, 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 ba. Okay? So again, I have five and three, seven, five, eight and seven, 10 and eight. 
okay? And that'll complete our first eight bars. So if I play from F, I've got... Okay, one more time slow. You can notice that that rhythm on the last bar is quarters. One, two, three, four, right? So that's our first eight bars, guys. Um, so let me do this. Let's go ahead and just play through that harmony one all the way through, and then we can um, wrap up this lesson video. So here we go. Okay, so we can already hear just how pretty it sounds, right? So such a nice contrast from the basic, right? We're introducing um, a harmony that fits so well on top of that basic chord progression and provides such an interesting sounding dynamic, such an interesting layer to the music. So if you guys enjoyed this lesson and you want to learn the rest of this tune, just go to rockclass101.com, look for EP002, and there again you can get the complete tabs to print off with um, access to part two of the video lesson and access to that on-screen tab here, which is interactive and lets you hit play and highlight bars, loop them, slow it down, all that cool stuff. All of that's at rockclass101.com. I'll see you in part two. Thanks.